Hello, my name is Monica Brody, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I'll be attending the University of Rochester as an incoming freshman in the fall. This summer, I worked in the Arizona Poison and Drug Information Center under Director Dr. Mazda Shirazi. Here in the Poison Control Center, we specialize in clinical toxicology. On the average day, we deal with clinical cases of anything from snake bites, scorpion stings, bee envenomations, overdoses, and more, which goes directly to our call center. The ultimate question Dr. Shirazi in the Poison Control Center asks is, how can we improve the effects of envenomations in the clinical setting, and how can we better our patient's recovery in the clinical setting? In research, my goal is to answer the more specific question of, what are the long-term psychological impacts of major rattlesnake envenomations? By answering this question and providing evidence of psychological impacts of rattlesnake bites, we can reevaluate clinical follow-ups and go beyond dismissing a case just because its physical effects are cured. The importance of this research means that we can solve the ultimate questions of improving the effects of animations and bettering patients' recovery by providing sequelae of rattlesnake bites in order to provide proof of need of psychological intervention. This way, insurance companies and hospitals can improve medical care and services for these patients. My research this year focused more on data collection and analysis than hands-on laboratory learning. Thus, I expanded my research skills by submitting an IRB and examining past literature regarding snake bites, PTSD, anxiety, depression, and snake bites in children, and decreased quality of life after snake bites. By utilizing resources such as PubMed, Scopus, and more, I was able to find substantial evidence of long-term psychological impacts of snake bites like PTSD, depression, anxiety, and especially in rural and underdeveloped countries. However, there is limited evidence of long-term psychological impact in the clinical setting here in Arizona. In order to address this puzzling result, Dr. Shirazi provided through the Arizona Poison and Drug Center's database, TalkCentury, de-identified rattlesnake bite patients from 2017 through 2019. I looked through these clinical notes of thousands of cases for keywords or phrases that indicated psychological distress, especially in cases classified as major envenomation. I found everything from sleep disturbances, such as insomnia and sleepwalking, to depression and anxiety, to even new food allergies and changes in taste developed after the envenomation. While these findings were fascinating and helped support my research, there was also evidence of significant pieces of information missing in the clinical notes. Often there was issues following up with patients a few months out, and there was no procedure that asked about psychological or behavioral changes after envenomations. In order to combat these concerns, my next goal is to answer the following questions and collaborate with toxicologists and other clinical specialists. How can we incorporate more psychological questions in a clinical setting, and how do we diagnose these certain conditions? What are the potential psychological questions we could ask? How do we encourage other hospitals, toxicologists, poison control centers to include psychological questions in their clinical follow-ups? How does snake bite and other envenomations impact the development of other chronic diseases? And how do we utilize these psychological clinical questions for other medical conditions?